Greetings, reggae fans. Ariel Grace here, and on this episode of Backstage at ReggaeReport.com, we bring you our wrap-up of the Reggae Academy Awards held earlier this year in Kingston, Jamaica. Immediately following the awards presentation, MPQ caught up with a few of reggae's legendary music producers. Meet some of the men that helped shape the reggae music you enjoy today. Okay, here we are at the first annual Reggae Academy Awards with none other than King Jammy. King Jammy, you, uh, you were part of the show tonight. How did that feel? Well, I'm feeling very good, you know, because it's the first time they're having this award, and it's great. Yes. Great. It's and gonna you be got big. to be a presenter? Right, right. And it's going to be bigger next time. Yes. So what are you doing? Are you still producing, turning out the hits? I'm still producing, but I'm not releasing right My sons are doing all the thing now. Ah. You know, my four sons are doing all the thing. They're running the road right so now. the princes. Yeah, the princes are running the road right now. Yeah? Well, that's great. That gives you a chance to enjoy life now? Right. I'm still going back in the studio oh. because I just completed my new studio. Oh, so I'll be doing some work that? this a year. A new studio. I'll be doing some work this year. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And your new studio is where? Same place, oh. 38 St. Lucia Road. All right. Yeah. And is there anything, um, you have anything coming up or that your sons, you can tell us about your sons? No, I'm, 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 I'm going to have things later this year. Okay. But my sons are doing things right now. All right. King Good. Jammy, later this year. You heard it first here backstage at ReggaeReport.com. Thank you, Jammy. You're welcome. Here we are at the first annual Reggae Academy Awards with two legends in the reggae music industry, Bunny Striker Lee and Niney Holness, also known as Niney the Observer. Want to say hi to the fans? Yes, it's great to say hi to your fans, you know, and keep on your keeping fans, on. Your, your fans, your fans. Yes. It's good, you know. Did you enjoy being part of the show? Yeah. Reggae is 40 years old, you know. We started in 1968 with Bangarang, Danny and myself, Lee Perry, and the late great Clan Sickles. And Joe Gibbs yes, was God a part of soul. it. Yes. Yeah, that was a nice tribute you did yes. to Joe Gibbs tonight. Yes, thank you very so, much. So, are you still producing? Yeah, I can never stop. That born in it and I'm going to die in it. All right, that, yeah. that's what we want to hear. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, thank you, gentlemen, very yeah. much. And Peggy Q here backstage again after the first annual Reggae Academy Awards with my very tall, yeah, nice friend, man. Jack Scorpio. Original Scorpio, the sting of it, all of the sound system and who makes some of the greatest record in the business. That's true. <laughs> no joke about it. <laughs> and what are you doing now, Mr. Scorpio? I'm just, um, you know, Making some music, yes. Um, my sound is now on the road again. I'm going around. I'm touring with it, especially with the sound. I'm promoting my some of my it's them from the 80s. I'm trying to go to the online things too. I'm I'm working. I'm doing a lot of work same way. But did you have a good time here at the first uh, Reggae Academy? Uh, wonderful. Uh -huh. it, no, it's very nice. It's very beautiful. You think we're on to something here? I think we're going to have a great thing ahead of you. Uh -huh. And you must just keep on doing it and make it be wonderful. Well, it's thanks to people like you that Reggae's gotten this far. Yes, we really appreciate it. And I really appreciate the work that you guys are doing. Uh, thank it's you. so good. All right, thank you. Jack Scorpio. Every time. The day after the award show, I caught up with winner and performer Atana, and she shared with me the inspiration behind her songwriting. And you write all your own songs, right? Yeah, man. I have no, on the album, I have writers on the album, but yeah, I do. Okay. So where do your ideas come from? What are the themes? People. Every day, people like, my auntie went to go get a job and she didn't get it. She was denied. I wrote wrong address off of that. Um, I went to Africa and I met this little boy and that's where the inspiration from Roots came from. Um, people were just asking all the time, how come you never write a love song? That's when Warrior Love came in, you know. How would you describe your music to new fans? Very rootsy, um, acoustic sometimes, uh, reggae. Um, and now when I start reggae, I mean culture reggae, like one, two reggae. Um, and then also I have some uh, songs that could be considered pop too. So I guess it's a little bit of everything. Um, but mostly, I would just say, reggae soul. Straight from the soul, straight from my reggae. When you say acoustic, do you play an The guitar, yeah, yeah, I play the guitar. Roots was a song that I strummed on the guitar um, before we went into the studio. Um, so there's a couple of other songs that I have on the album. MPQ also spoke with Queen Africa about her nominated song, and about her motivation for writing about such strong yet sensitive issues. And then 
This CD, uh, Fire Mama, contains the song Below the Waist, yes. which you performed beautifully at the <laughs> Academy Awards. Yes. Uh, you performed it beautifully. Thank you. And, this, and so this deals with domestic violence, mm -hmm. and now your latest single, uh, Daddy, yes. which deals with incest. Yes. So tell us about your motivation to write and then release such thought-provoking and controversial songs. It's just by looking at society, I mean, I was in, invited into the Women's Center the other day to speak to about 300 girls. And the 300 of the girls that are there, all of them are pregnant or had babies already. And they're under 17. And they are pregnant, half of them are pregnant by their fathers. And it is sad to stand in front of kids like these and to say to them, Try and get over it, you know, try and not blame yourself for, for this. We cannot just look at our society and say that our people are behaving badly and we don't check what is it that is happening inside of these people's minds because you and me are normal people, so we act normally. We don't have a reason to behave in a wild and, and, and insecure way because we are very secure with ourselves. People will act insecure and will do bad things because there's something happening somewhere inside them that somebody just needs to reach out to. You're not going to save everybody, but at least we can try. And I think that's what music is supposed to be about. Music is supposed to be about that, the voice of the voiceless, the, the place where, because music is where everybody goes to. If you're a murderer, you're a Muslim, a Christian, a Rasta, it doesn't matter who you are. We all go to music for comfort. Whatever it is that we need comfort for, we find the music to, to match with that. So I'm saying, instead of we pointing fingers all the time and, and, and making it seem as if we are, 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 are separate from each other in this one earth, we just need to just look into each other's problems for a second and to match it even with hers and, and just move on, you know? To wrap up our three-part series, MPQ sat down with the Reggae Academy chairman, Lloyd Stanbury, the day after the history-making event, and asked about his first award show experience. I'd like to, you know, the day after the, reg the first yeah. Reggae Academy <laughs> Award. <laughs> thank you for coming by and talking Yeah, no, I would it. like to, you know, really say a big thank you, you know, to the, the um, team, you know, that made this possible. Okay. We had major challenges, you know trying to do something like this for the first time, which required the cooperation of it's a large team of persons on the production, and then the cooperation of the artists and managers and the people we asked to come to present awards, because they're not accustomed to a production at that level that requires mm -hmm. days of rehearsals and following a script. So it was challenging, but I think we did fairly well and I would really like to thank everyone for making it happen. There we have it. Thank you for watching, and we hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the 2008 Reggae Academy Awards. Once again, I'm Ariel Grace, and we have more great episodes planned, so meet us here backstage at reggaereport.com.